Yeah, so so good morning, everyone. So I'm Pan Li. I'm actually right now a, a assistant professor at Purdue University, SAS department. And my uh, main research focus is on the uh, graph machine learning algorithms. So I particularly focus on the, the foundation side. So basically try to understand the uh, algorithmic foundation and build the mathematical tools to analyze this, this kind of algorithms. Okay, and uh, okay, so perhaps we can uh, start today's topic. So first, uh, thank, uh, uh, so thanks for coming to this talk. Okay, so I'm very happy to uh, to share my our, our works. And today, I actually would like to uh, introduce how to use, let's say, distance features and labeling tricks to improve the expressive power of uh, the graph neural network. Okay, so it, this, this is actually a line of research. So. So for today's topic, it's not like a single paper, but more like it covers a several uh, closely rel related paper, okay? So I will mostly focus on the theoretical insights and connections between these uh, three papers, this nested graph neural network labeling tricks and distance encoding. So I may also slightly discuss uh, other relevant works, uh, such as the transformers on graph or uh, let's say neural network, uh, so neural Bellman four network, with, which is very so. So both of them are very recent, uh, let's say uh, papers. So, but I, 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 in particular, I will focus on the expressive power of these models. Okay. All right, so I'm sure everyone here agrees with that uh, graphs are very important. So, so I will skip the, the big background. So let me uh, start with uh, a quick review of the uh, standard graph neural network models. Okay, so given a graph structure data. So graph neural network typically, uh, so we'll start with associating each node with uh, initial vector representation based on some transformations of the node attributes. And examples of node attributes include one's demographic information in a social network or, uh, or the, the item types in a molecule network, okay? If, uh, and of course, if node attributes are not available, so we suppose the initialization will be some constant or a node degree. So here we do not consider using, let's say, random node attributes at the, at for the slow convergence uh, of the, their training procedure. Okay. All right. So standard graph neural network models will gradually update the node representation by aggregating and combining the representations from the neighbors. The aggregation procedure typically correspond to, uh, let's say, uh, a, a set pooling function, okay, or such as a sum pooling, a mean pooling, max pooling, etc. And the key point here of the aggregation is to keep permutation in with respect to the uh, the neighbor, the orders of the neighbors, okay. And the update operation is to uh, let's say combine the aggregated features and with uh, one node's own features. And typically, we can use a simple feed forward network to implement that, right? And ultimately, we can get the, the final node representations to make the prediction. And um, uh, so in general, so mo most, uh, most of often, so we, we, we consider two types of uh, predictions. So we, uh, so, so where uh, we can do node level prediction, where we use a single node representation to predict the label of the nodes, or we can do graph level prediction. So by aggregating the node representations in a Let's say in an entire graph to predict the label of the graph. Okay. Uh, okay. So for today, we are going to let's say study the expressive power of a graph neural network. And typically, there are two types of research questions regarding the expressive power of a graph neural network. The first one is about function approximation problem. Okay. So basically, what kind of uh, class of functions that graph neural network can approximate? Okay. And and the other uh, question is about distinguishing graph uh, structures. Say uh, whether, let's say, graph neural network can distinguish two different graph structures or not. Okay, and 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 we know that the first one is more general than the second one. So well, uh, so so and, and of course, the analysis is more difficult. So so well, m so many recent works have. Uh, let's say, try to prove the equivalence between the two uh, under certain conditions, okay? And uh, today, uh, we just make our life easier. So we just focus on the second, uh, let's say, question. So that is to use the graph neural network to distinguish different uh, graph structures, okay? Uh, all right, a uh, well-known result on this question is, I guess, ev everybody knows, uh, let's say, comes knows, uh, let's say, in this workshop knows, knows about that. So, so it's just like a standard graph neural network has limited the expressive power, okay? So basically, if two graph structure data that have 
also with different labels, uh, but cannot be distinguished by using, let's say, one W test. So, so a traditional, or let's say, graph isomorphism testing algorithm, and then uh, standard graph neural network models can also uh, will also fail to distinguish them, and does fail to make the right prediction of their labels, right? And and this kind of issue appears in both, let's say, graph level predictions or and no level predictions. Okay. Uh, yeah, it seems I have a question. Um, oh. Sorry, so it's just a slide sharing. Okay, so uh, again, feel free to ask me questions. So if you have any kind of quick questions, so if you think the question could be long, then maybe we can leave it, uh, leave it to the very end, okay? All right, so to make uh, our later discussion clear, so let me first clarify two phrases, okay? So the first one is we later we will call the graph neural network as the standard graph neural networks. So if, they just perform the standard message passing, okay? Or, or say, just aggregated representations from the direct neighbors of a node, okay? And as aforementioned, they suffer from, let's say, uh, the limited expressive power bounded by 1W test, okay? So this includes many, let's say, almost, uh, let's say, 90% of the, 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 the graph neural network we are now working on, uh, all right? Oh, sorry. And uh, the second phrase I want to uh, say is I want to define is we will later we will call the procedure to update node representations as node representation refinement. Okay, know that the uh, standard graph neural network will adopt node representation refinement. Okay, but um, importantly, so not all procedures uh, or graph neural networks will let's say perform node representation refinement. Uh, so, 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 so are, are standard graph neural network models. So basically there are some other type of models also perform node representation refinement, but they are not belong to uh, standard graph neural networks. For example, uh, let's say transformers on graph or graph homers. Uh, yeah, like that's kind of model. And there are also some other type of models on graph that do not use node representation refinement such as higher order graph neural network. And in today's talk, we will not consider higher order graph neural network, okay? All right, let me continue. So, um, uh, right, so with this background, okay, so let me next introduce the, the, the uh, roadmap of today's dis discussion. Okay, so in the high level, I will mainly introduce two statements, okay, as a take, as the main takes ways of today's talk. So first I will explain, so a distant, inf a distant features essentially can improve the expressive power of the node feature refinement procedure of the standard graph neural network models. Okay, and this is a kind of related to uh, our work uh, like this nested uh, graph neural networks. Okay, and second, I will also explain uh, labeling tricks can solve the problems behind the node feature, a uh, node representation refinement procedure. Okay, to make it applicable to node set representation learning problem. Okay, so so this is kind of related to the labeling trick paper. Okay. I will focus on this two, um, try to explain these two statements. Okay, and actually our previous works on distance encoding has shown the, also shown some theoretical results for these two statements, but kind of entangles these two concepts. Uh, so I, I hope today's talk, I will make it more clear to you, to you, okay? And later I will introduce more about the underlying connections between these three concepts, okay? And if we have more time, I will also introduce more about our recent progress on building, let's say, scalable uh, distance encoding method uh, by designing a system-friendly uh, algorithm, okay? All right, so let's discuss the first topic. So to introduce that, I will use the following four steps, okay? First up, we will define uh, the general distance features of the graph, okay? And then we will show the examples where standard graph neural networks actually will miss capturing distance features, okay? And, and, uh, uh, and later we will discuss how to use the distance features practically to uh, improve the expressive power of a graph neural network models. And finally, I will give a more rigorous, let's say characterization of the powers uh, of, of the expressive power behind distance features, okay? Uh, all right, so 
here is the general definition of the distant features over, let's say, between two nodes over the graph. So basically, the distance, I define the distance between two nodes over the graph as a vector uh, of the landing probabilities of the random works, okay, that start from one node and land on uh, another node given certain steps, okay? And in theory, so this uh, the number of nodes could be, the number of steps could be chosen in the order of the diameter of the, the graph. So, but in practice, we just uh, uh, set it at a constant, okay? And know that this kind of general definition um, after certain mapping can represent many types of, let's say, distance uh, over the graph, including, let's say, shorted pass distance, heating times between uh, to, from one node to another, or page rank, personalized page rank scores, generalized page rank scores, and et cetera. So we can imagine this kind of distant features include many important structural information of the graph, right? Okay, so however, I have to argue standard graph neural networks model mostly miscapturing the information provided by the distant features. So for example, so standard graph neural network cannot, uh, will fail to count the local subgraph patterns such as loops around, let's say a node. So, so this actually has been proved by, uh, let's say Chen in 2020. Okay, so as shown in the example here, uh, so, so the, the node representations cannot tell whether, uh, let's say, node A or node B is in a, let's say, through loop. Uh, so because a standard graph neural network model cannot distinguish these two nodes, okay? The, the subtree rooted as these two nodes are exactly the same, so their node representations are exactly the same, okay? So however, if we use, uh, let's say, decent features, we can uh, solve this question trivially because the landing probabilities uh, based on a three-step random walks. So from A to A will be greater than one, uh, will be greater than zero. And while the, the, the landing probability um, based on, let's say, three-step uh, random walk from B to B will be exactly zero, okay? So we can check about that. All right, another example is to, let's say, another example of the failure of a graph neural network is to, to distinguish non-isomorphic, let's say, graphs, okay? And uh, uh, standard graph neural network models will fail to distinguish these two graphs, right? So, so because the, the, the graphs listed here will have the same set of uh, nodal representations, okay? Nodal representations. However, use, again, use the distance features, we can distinguish them in a trivial way. So, so because of learning probabilities of every node, uh, on let's say every node on the uh, in the left uh, graph will be let's say non-zero will be greater than zero. So based on the three-step random walk, well the landing probabilities on every node of every node um, on the right graph will be zero. So after, based on three-step random walk. Okay. All right, so this is uh, actually not the only case where uh, graph neural network fails. So, so it's well known that uh, standard graph neural network models or one double test will fail to distinguish none, uh, let's say any two uh, regular graphs of the same size or of the same node degree. And actually this, we can also generalize this concept to the even uh, attributed graphs, okay? And actually we define a class which is called attributed regular graphs where standard graph uh, neural networks will always fail to distinguish. And we summarize the statement in this um, book chapter we just uh, uh, published recently, okay? All right, right now we understand uh, the standard graph neural network model will generally uh, fail to capture the information behind distance features. And then, um, of course, we are thinking about building more expressive graph neural networks. So uh, the question is how can we leverage or how can we probably combine the distance features with the uh, graph neural networks. And there are two, in general, two natural ways. So the first one is to use distant features as the extra node attributes, and the other one is to use them as the uh, extra edge attributes. And actually, if we see the literature, we will see, let's say, almost all the, uh, let's say, previous works, they, they claim they are building, let's say, more powerful uh, graph neural network model, except that those higher order graph neural network ones. So they, they essentially leverage, uh, let's say, uh, distant features to make the graph neural network more expressive, okay? And they, they can be put into these two categories, okay? Let me uh, briefly introduce some of the approaches as an example here to show, let's say, how can we use the distance features in the practice? Okay, so 
in this um, I, IDGN work, this is called identity aware graph neural network. So, so to learn uh, the each node representation, we just associate the node, okay, whose representation is to be learned with an extra attribute one and all the other nodes as zero, okay? And, and this, we, which is equivalent to this differentiating this node from the rest of the node based on the shorty path distance. Right, so this is equivalent, and uh, as we can see, once we have this attribute, then we can easily distinguish these two nodes. Okay, so by using a three-layer graph neural network. All right, another way to use the distance features is uh, in the, this less nested graph neural network paper. So, which uh, so where when we try to learn the, the representation of a node, we extract the enclosing subgraph around the node. Okay, and actually the, the, the extraction procedure, okay, the radius of the radius of the extracted subgraph actually reflects the information of the shorty path distance. Okay, and then um, so 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 the model can just run, let's say we, we just so the model just run the standard graph neural network uh, on the extracted subgraph, and we use the the, the subgraph, the extracted subgraph representation as the node representation. And of course, this will improve the expressive power of uh, the obtained node representation, okay? And this recent, let's say, as I clear work, um, so from start to subgraph, also share the similar idea, okay, at the nested gene, okay? Also follow this uh, idea. Okay, so next, uh, I, I I would like to show, uh, I also would like to show two works as examples uh, on how to use distance features as a extra edge attributes, okay, as the extra edge attributes. So uh, the first one is about the graph transformer or this graph former, okay, so which is just build a transformer over the graph. And it's, it, it actually uses, uh, it, it actually uses the distance features between two nodes to compute the attention weight uh, between those two nodes, okay? So, so just as here, so we have the infinity, let's say <laughs> distance or, or like a one to three, like a distance between the uh, two nodes, uh, use that as a feature to compute the, the attention weight, okay? And, since, and based on this attention weights, then we can distinguish, let's say, A and B, just using one layer of the graph transformer, okay, of the graph transformer. And of course, another paper, this mix hop work also shares a similar spirit with the graph transformer um, to use uh, this distant features. It asks to aggregate the neighbors from multi-hop neighborhood within just one uh, graph neural network layer simultaneously. And uh, the key point here is that uh, the, the, the nodes based on, let's say, different hops will use uh, different parameters. And this is kind of equivalent to using shorty path distance as an edge attributes uh, or edge features to control the parameters. Okay, so mathematically they are equivalent. And uh, okay, so these are the, let's say, practical ways to, let's say, some uh, examples of the practical ways to leverage the uh, distance features to build a more expressive graph neural network model. So, so next, uh, let me give a more, uh, let's say, rigorous characterization of the power behind the distance features, okay? And uh, uh, we will just focus on the theoretical in, uh, results in the next is a graph neural network paper. So, so essentially, uh, the proof idea is actually comes from the, the previous distance encoding paper, and also the, the obtained argument or conclusion can be generalized to other ways to use, uh, let's say, distance features. Okay, and of course, uh, it's also applied to the case where we use the distance features as a, as a actual edge attributes. Okay, edge 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 attributes. Okay, so let's see, um, let's say how this nested uh, graph neural networks, uh, let's say, uh, work uh, more specifically. Okay, it's, it's very easy. So we actually, uh, we just need to extract the subgraph around each node and uh, such extraction uh, will leverage the information as, uh, of, based on shorty path distance. Okay, I, I have mentioned. Uh, and then we just run a standard graph neural network model on let's say each of this subgraph and uh, use the subgraph representation as a node representation, okay? And finally, we will pull the obtained node representation together to make the uh, final prediction, okay, over the, over the uh, graph, okay? 
And uh, okay, so we may have, let's say the following theorem to characterize the power of the such distant features. Okay, and here the conditions are, so we just focus on our regular non-attributed uh, n size of graphs. Okay, so but but know that so this condition is not crucial, so it uh, can be easily generalized. So we just need to introduce more, let's say, more tedious notation. So so it's not uh, let's say um, that crucial this condition. Okay, so uh, um, so we we also need to use let's say subgraph extraction around let's say each node that should cover let's say uh, the number of hops in a in a certain value. Okay, in a, in a certain interval, in a certain interval, and this is cause uh, let's say this requires us what kind of distance information we want to use here. Okay, and and and, and then we, we we for for the for the uh, graph neural network uh, we used here, we just need the standard graph neural network network uh, on each subgraph, but we require the number of layers should be greater than uh, let's say certain threshold. Okay, certain uh, certain threshold. Then what could be the conclusion? Okay, so actually we may prove that, that the overall this nested graph neural network model so can distinguish almost all, let's say, uh, such kind of graphs. Okay, such kind of graphs, almost all such kind of graphs. But uh, however, so because they are regular graphs, so a uh, standard graph neural network model will always uh, fail to distinguish them. Okay, even with infinite number of layers. Okay, so, so overall the argument is, uh, so basically, uh, with distant features, we can distinguish almost all the graphs. Okay, that standard graph neural network without distant features cannot distinguish. Okay. All right. So, of course, uh, to publish a, a machine learning paper, so we also need to have a good empirical results. So, but th this are, is not like uh, the the key point of today's talk. So, I, I just leave the table here. Uh, on the performance of our model on let's say OGB data set. So I will not go into details. So, but interesting, um, interested audience can uh, check our paper for the more complete, complete results, okay? Um, all right, so before I go to the next uh, question, so any questions uh, here? Uh, um, Oh, there are very long questions. So, so let let me uh, let me try to do this. So let me try to finish the let's say uh, all the um, uh, let's say all the um, content here, and then we will go back to see the questions. Okay. Um, all right. So uh, now we understand the role of uh, distant features to improve the uh, standard graph neural network models, so, or in particular the node representation refinement procedure behind standard graph neural network models. Okay. However, it cannot solve everything. Okay. Even if the we, we, we already achieved the most expressive uh, node representations, okay? Node, node representation refinement procedure, okay? So let, let me next show the problem. And actually to address that problem, we, we propose this labeling trick idea, okay? Uh, let me move forward, sorry. Yeah, okay, so I will use uh, the following five steps to uh, explain the problem, okay? So first I will define the uh, node uh, set representation learning problem, okay? In a more, um, how can I say, formal way. And second, I will explain that uh, graph neural network, even if uh, they have uh, most expressive node representation refinement procedure, they may still fill in, let's say, doing, uh, let's say node set representation learning problem okay and then i will explain how labeling tricks can solve such a problem in a, in both the theory and practice okay and finally i will give a comparison between three important concepts including let's say distance encoding uh, distance features labeling tricks and distance encoding and as and also as uh, the cell and the um, this uh, Newman Bellman four a uh, neural Bellman four network essentially leverage the labeling tricks to do link prediction. So I will also compare them. Okay, based on our theory. All right. Okay. Uh, all right. To better illustrate the uh, labeling trick, let me first generalize graph representation learning problem to the no set representation learning problem. 
Okay, so here we may observe, let's say one node, several graphs, it doesn't matter because later you will see the, the model can be generalized across the graphs, okay? It doesn't matter. So here I use A to denote the adjacency matrix and X to denote the node attributes, okay? And a node set representation learning problem is to make predictions over several queries. Okay, or, or a series of graph queries. And each graph query can be denoted as a tuple A, X, and S. Okay, and here S is a set of nodes that we want to make prediction over. Okay, and the size of S will may vary according to, let's say, the specific applications. For example, if we want to predict a label of nodes, so this set uh, just include that particular node. So if we want to predict links, then this set create, uh, include, let's say, a pair of nodes, and etc. Okay, and no set representation learning problem is crucial in the uh, applications uh, like uh, the, the link prediction, relation prediction uh, in a in a let's say knowledge graph or um, or a natural motif prediction in a higher order graph and and etc. Okay, uh, all right, so. Now, let me explain uh, why most graph neural networks will fail to uh, in this, let's say, no set uh, representation learning problem, okay? So most graph neural network, uh, essentially they follow a combination of two procedures. One is this node representation refinement procedure, and then do a node representation pooling, right? And, and of course, this can be also used to uh, let's say, uh, to, to learn the no set representations, right? So we, we just need to read out the, the representations of the relevant nodes in the, in the, in the query node set, okay? Um, so it's easy. However, uh, the problem is um, the node representation refinement procedure essentially limits the expressive power of graph neural network to represent a no set, okay? Such as a link. So even though, even if we have a, let's say, very uh, expressive uh, graph neural network, for example, those based on the distance features we just uh, introduced, they will still feel here, okay? They will still feel here. So to, to, to show this, let's, uh, let me uh, give an example here. Uh, suppose we are going to use graph neural network to answer this same community query. So basically, uh, so specifically, so whether node V is more likely in the same community with node W or node U, okay? And the graph neural network will fail here. So the reason is actually um, e even, so graph neural network that, uh, let's say, um, that, that based, so that, that already can achieve the most expressive node representation refinement procedure uh, here cannot distinguish node U and uh, node W. Okay, because node W and node U can be mapped to, let's say, can be mapped to each other under graph automorphism here. So they are e exactly equivalent to each other. Okay, exactly equivalent to each other. So, 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 so then, uh, even we have the most expressive graph neural network, they will associate them with the same representation. And this actually, uh, the, the first papers that discuss, that mentioned this issue uh, appeared in this uh, positional aware graph neural network model and this clear work on the equivalence between the graph neural net, uh, position encoding and the structural graph representation, okay? All right, so then how to solve that, okay? So the, this issue, uh, okay, so this comes uh, the labeling tricks. So, this is, uh, so, so to, to solve that, we propose this labeling tricks, okay? And actually labeling tricks are very simple. So, so you will see that the idea here is uh, quite simple. So a uh, labeling trick is just to associate the nodes with some actual features, okay? Let's denote that with L, that satisfy the following two properties, okay? It can distinguish the current node set from the rest nodes, okay? And it should also satisfy the permutation equivariance, okay? Later, we will go back to this concept, okay? So this property, okay? And um, uh, one simple labeling trick that satisfies these two properties is just the, the zero one labeling trick. So basically we associate each node in the query node set S with an extra feature one and all the other nodes at zero. Okay, this is a called label uh, zero one labeling trick. Okay, and uh, let's see how 
it can help, uh, let's say, solve the, the pro practical problem. So we use the zero one labeling trick to answer this uh, same community query. Okay, so for the left query, we associate nodes V and U with the extra feature one and all the other nodes at zero. And for the right query, we associate node V and W with the extra feature one and all the other nodes at zero. Okay, and it's easy to see that based on this labeling tricks or zero one labeling tricks, just to use one layer standard graph neural network model, we can easily distinguish these two cases. Okay, these two cases. All right, so, and more importantly, if we compare another two node pair, okay, we U and uh, let's say WQ, so where these two node pairs are symmetric, then, um, so, so, so then the, the graph neural network with this labeling trick will give them exactly the same prediction. Okay, so this is crucial because this means the graph neural net model trained based on the left query can be directly applied to or generalized to the to 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 making prediction for the right query. Okay, and this also indicates the graph neural network with labeling tricks so can be generalized across different parts of the graph and across different graphs. Okay, so so this is kind of actually guaranteed by the second property of the labeling trick that is to keep permutation equivalence and uh, and uh, and thus the obtained model will be inductive okay and so this is why the nbf net and also uh sale to do the link predictions are inductive okay all right so 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 um yeah, so know that the the, uh, the, the labeling trick, uh, again, let me emphasize that again. So labeling trick should satisfy permutation covariance. So um, so so uh, other features like the node features based on node index based encoding uh, or position encoding based on Laplace and map. So we we'll, are not valid labeling tricks. Okay, another valid labeling tricks, but but uh, for the position encoding stuff, so I, I know many works recently have been trying to use that. So so if you want to see the some maybe some theory or how to build the let's say inductive model based on labeling uh, uh, based on position encoding, please check our very recent work in this clear. So but we will I, I will not go into that in uh, in detail in today's talk. Okay, so I I will not go into that. All right, so then. In theory, uh, so 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 then we, we see the let's say the labeling trick and how it works in practice. Okay, so so then in theory, so how powerful that labeling trick could be. Okay, so we characterize the the power uh, by using the following argument. Okay, suppose here we have a graph neural network model that is very powerful that can distinguish any non isomorphic nodes. Okay, just the nodes. So, so based on node refinement procedure. So, what do I mean by non-isomorphic nodes? So, here in this example here, V and Q are isomorphic, U and W are isomorphic. So, the graph neural network model will definitely give them exactly the same representation. So, but V and W are not isomorphic. Uh, so, so, so the graph neural network will give them different uh, representation. Okay. Okay, so so based on this, let's say uh, graph neural network. So so if we have such a neural, the graph neural network, then if it uh, can leverage labeling tricks, then we may prove that, that it can distinguish all non, let's say non isomorphic uh, node sets queries. Okay, so basically it, it can yeah. So with that uh, graph neural network plus the labeling trick, we can distinguish almost uh, not almost all actually it's, it's all uh let's say all of let's say non-isomorphic no sets non-isomorphic no sets so what do i mean by non-isomorphic no sets so here is also an example so uh, in this example we say uh, let's say node pair vu and wq are isomorphic and the node pair vw and uq are also isomorphic but let's say the the node pair vu and VW, they are not isomorphic, okay? And then with labeling tricks, we can distinguish, let's say, VW, uh, VU and VW, okay? There's two node pairs. So essentially, labeling tricks play the role to fill in the gap 
between the node representation refinement procedure and the prediction over the node sets. Okay, so this is a key message I want to convey here. Uh, sorry. Okay, cool. So um, one may ask. So 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 one one may ask if the requirement on uh, let's say distinguishing non-isomorphic nodes is too strong to make the labeling trick, uh, let's say trivial. The answer is no. So in the paper, we actually show, uh, let's say a more detailed uh, analytic results. So we proved that actually in, in, in the graphs, there are many, many uh, node pairs, just like the U, uh, node pair UV versus node pair uh, uh, VW here. So, 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 so they're not, they're not isomorphic, but graph neural network, that can distinguish that can distinguish any non-isomorphic nodes. They cannot distinguish this non-isomorphic node pairs. Okay, but if we just use a standard graph neural network model with labeling tricks, okay, then we can distinguish these node pairs. Okay, these node pairs. So yeah, all right. So uh, next, I'm going to let's say. Uh, uh, compare this uh, distance features uh, labeling tricks and distance encoding. So before doing that, any quick questions? So so uh, because I know the previous argument here may may, may be a little bit theoretical. Uh, so I have questions about like uh, the the previous slides. Yeah. Um, this so, one. Yes, um, I'm not sure here. Like when you say that they. Um, distinguish non-isomorphic, that they can distinguish non-isomorphic nodes. Mm -hmm. um, and you said that it can distinguish all non-isomorphic nodes. But uh, one question I have here like is, um, like we know that distinguishing between isomorphic graphs uh, is an NP-hard problem. So mm -hmm. here, mm -hmm. like uh, uh, what you're proposing, like can, uh, can it be used to distinguish all uh, isomorphic graphs, or um, or like what? How how does your method uh, position itself itself against uh, this theorem? Uh, oh, sorry. So if I understand your question clearly, so you are saying so maybe the uh, so we don't have a graph neural network can distinguish all the non-isomorphic nodes, right? So because they are, uh, they will be too powerful. So you are, you have some concerns about this condition. If I understand your question clearly. Uh, yes, basically, like um, if you say you can distinguish uh, all non-isomorphic nodes, does it, mm -hmm. it means that you can also distinguish all um, non-isomorphic non graphs? Yeah. Yes. 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 So, okay. so essentially, there is no polynomial. Uh, let's say a graph neural network, practical yeah, okay. graph neural network, that can really achieve this condition. Yeah. So, so but, what you are mentioning is correct. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so, so here is we just want to show like uh, the difference between uh, the connection between let's say distinguish non-isomorphic nodes plus labeling trick. Then we can distinguish non-isomorphic node sets. Okay, so, so so this is a theorem behind. And uh, and this slides, I just want to say, essentially in practice, we don't need that condition. Okay, so so, so there are still like uh, many, many node pairs. Okay, so the, although they are non-isomorphic, they are non-isomorphic. So, uh, but a graph neural network, even they, they can distinguish all non-isomorphic nodes. They cannot distinguish yeah. this node pair, just like the VU and VW here. Okay. okay. However, if we just use a standard graph neural network model, I mean, we don't have less like, most expressive one. Like, uh, yeah. So, so, but if we use labeling tricks here, we can easily distinguish these two. Okay. Okay. I understand. So it's not, uh, it's not just about distinguishing uh, two graphs that are isomorphic, but also distinguishing about like within a single graph, distinguishing yeah. between yeah. nodes that that have a similar structure. Yeah. Um, now, like one of the questions that comes in the chat, uh, that came in the chat is about like, uh, in many problems, uh, mm -hmm. when you're dealing with large graphs, for example, with Cora, and you're not working with molecules, you don't have this problem of um, two graphs that are perfectly isomorphic. Mm -hmm. um, and even like within within the graph itself, 
Mm -hmm. um, you, you don't necessarily find any kind of isomorphic nodes, but you can yeah. find some nodes that have very, very similar uh, structures around them. And that mm -hmm. maybe they are like, let's say a quasi isomorphic. Um, and mm -hmm. like, because their neighborhood and their, the structure where the node is are mm -hmm. very, very similar. So yeah. the question is like, um, can this trick also be used for, uh, to help distinguish between nodes that are hard to distinguish, but distinguishable by standard GNNs? Uh, or do you use it only for like, uh, or does it work only for a perfectly isomorphic pair of nodes? Yeah, so this is a nice question. I think this is a, a, always a missing theory behind the graph neural network community. So let me, let me say this. Actually, if a graph neural network doesn't satisfy, uh, how can I say, uh, permutation, uh, how can I say, um, uh, yeah, let me think about how, 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 how can I explain this? So uh, I, let, let me say this. So distinguish, let's say, or, or, or cannot distinguish here. So uh, let, uh, I'm, I'm trying to think about the connection between those two. So, um, yeah, so, so let, let me see this. So when we talk about whether a model can be applied to, let's say, almost, this, almost a non-isomorphic, an almost isomorphic nodes, or I almost isomorphic graphs, but not exactly isomorphic. Well, I guess the, 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 the implicit question behind that is whether our model can make good generalization between these two examples, right? So if their two graph structures are almost isomorphic, but not exactly isomorphic, whether our model can be generalized from one part to another part uh, or something. Uh, and, and this is, let's say to guarantee this is not uh, due to the expressive power of a graph neural network, but, but more like the permutation equivalence behind the graph neural network. So I'm, I'm not sure whether this is too theory here. So it's theoretical here. So, so basically if we think about the generalization issue between let's say similar type of isomorphic, uh, similar let's say type of isomorphic, isomorphism. So, so the key point here is generalization. And the, what guarantees the good generalization behind the graph neural network is because permutation equivalence, okay? And it's not a kind of related to the expressive power. And, uh, and uh, if, uh, if uh, some, uh, some audience here is really interested in, how can I say the connection between the equivalence and the generalization, I strongly suggest to check our paper here so we are trying to build the first, uh, let's say, bridge, try to connect the permutation equivalence and the generalization, where we define something called the permutation stability. And uh, yeah, so you may see this, then you will see the, some connection behind that. Okay. Yeah, so uh, sorry okay. about that. Um, so yeah, go ahead. Yeah, sorry if we can ask uh, a few more questions. Um, I know that uh, Ben, had a question he wanted to, to ask. So maybe you want to step in. Oh, uh, yeah, Ben's page, paper is about the, uh, uh, Ben asked the paper. Uh, uh, yeah, let, let, maybe let me first finish over my talk and uh, then uh, we can go back to that question. Do you think is that okay? Um, yeah, it's okay, but, but I know that he had other questions regarding not, not the paper, but like uh, the, the structure, oh, but uh, I see. Um, anyway, so we'll keep the questions uh, to the end. Mm -hmm. I also have uh, other questions uh, related yeah. to why you say that positional encoding is not a, a good labeling trick. Uh, yeah. Positional encoding using eigenvectors, and I mm -hmm. guess we'll keep that to the end. So uh, to, yeah, to yeah, give you some time. Yeah, I'm okay, happy to answer that. Yeah, let me first finish uh, the, the 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 content here. Okay, so. Um, all right, so, so according to the definition, so, so next I, I'm trying to, let's say, uh, make, 
explain the connection between these two concepts. Okay, the so distance features, the labeling tricks, and the distance encoding. Okay, so and according to the definition, actually, distance encoding, uh, distance features do not depend on a uh, query no set. Okay, they simply ask to use the that's a distant feature the information between the two nodes to build more expressive, uh, let's say node representation refinement procedure. Okay, so it's nothing related to the query node set as. So differently, labeling trick here is trying to emphasize the, the dependence uh, based on the query node set. Okay, they are trying to, so, so the labeling trick, the idea behind the labeling trick is try to de distinguish the nodes in the query node set uh, from the rest of nodes. Okay, so this is mostly important for uh, the, the link prediction task or, or triangle prediction task. Okay, and uh, and the distance encoding. Okay, this is uh, even uh, an early work, but when I proposed this uh, work, so I, I kind of mixed these two concepts. Okay, this distance features and labeling tricks. So, so it is uh, the distance encoding is to use distance features with respect to the query node set as a labeling trick, okay? So the more formal definition is that the following. So distance encoding of a node is defined as a set of distance features, okay? And a distance feature between this node to every node in the query node set S. So you can kind of see, so it leverages distance features and also leverages the uh, query node set, okay? This is what we call distance encoding. Okay, so so it's actually easy to show that distance encoding satisfies the two properties of labeling tricks. Okay, so first it can distinguish the query node set uh, from the rest, and also it can keep presentation equivalence. So and actually uh, we may easy uh, easy to see actually zero one labeling trick is a special case of uh, distance encoding. So so think about this. So 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 actually the node V being associated with one by using zero one labeling trick just the means the shortest pass distance from the node V to the query node set S is zero, okay? So, 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 so actually you can see the, the, the zero one labeling trick is a special case of a distance encoding. And, uh, but I also want to argue, uh, say, uh, clarify here, but graph neural network with zero one labeling trick could be less expressive than the graph neural network with distance encoding. Okay, so here I just list one example here. So if we want to distinguish this two subgraph S1 and S2, okay, in this, let's say in this joint 12 node graphs, okay, in this joint uh, 12 node graphs, then the standard uh, graph neural network with zero one labeling trick will fail to, let's say, distinguish them. Well, the, the, the uh, standard graph neural network with distance encoding can distinguish them. Okay, so so where we so because the distance encoding will establish the distance within the between the nodes in the query node set, but labeling trick cannot uh, distinguish that, cannot leverage that information. Okay, so um so so you can kind of play with this uh, as an exercise after this talk. Okay, uh, um okay, so one important application of the labeling trick is definitely for to perform link prediction. Okay, and essentially. Uh, the recent works, uh, the SAIL and the uh, NBFNet, or uh, uh, let's say identity aware, so IDGN, they actually adopt the labeling tricks to perform link prediction. So uh, actually, what's the, what's the key difference behind this, this models? Actually, SAIL uh, strictly follows the link, uh, uh, the labeling trick, and uh, it will label the, uh, the two nodes in, a, in each query. Uh, uh, and, and uh, treat these two queries separately, okay? Two queries separately. And, uh, and the NBFNet, however, so, so or, or IDGN, so they are trying to label, uh, let's say, the single south node uh, overlapped by the query, okay? In the example, in this example here is the node V here, okay? Is the node V here, all right? And uh, in this case, so NBFNet will just, uh, uh, will just, needs to run, let's say, a uh, graph neural network for one time to make prediction for, for these two queries. And this is how, uh, why, let's say, NBFNet in that paper, they claim, okay, we can uh, save uh, computation, okay? Because they, so, so in SAIL, we, we need to 
let's say treat this uh, query separately. So in the MBF net, it will so label one overlap the nodes and uh, uh, make prediction together. Okay, so. But of course, uh, such sharing mechanism behind NBFNet will also potentially decrease the expressive power uh, when we compare NBFNet and SIL. Okay, and the theory to tell such difference also lies in our uh, the, the, the distance encoding paper. So here I just give the one example here, uh, but I will not go into detail because it's a little bit involved. So so we if we consider the task to distinguish links. Uh, between two strongly regular graphs with the same, let's say, um, parameter mechanism. So, 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 yeah. So basically, di distinguish the links between two strongly non-isomorphic strongly regular graphs. Then, NBF net will fail to distinguish them. Okay. So, uh, so, uh, so NBF net will fail to distinguish here A and B node pair A and B and C and D by just labeling uh, one node. Uh, of each query, okay, of other query. Well, CO can distinguish these no two node pairs, so so A, B, and C, D from these two different, let's say, strongly regular graph. So, but as I mentioned, I will not go into detail. So we actually have, uh, 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 we are now working on another paper, try to summarize all the, let's say, content here. So, so, um, but if uh, you are if you want to know this in you know let's say urgently so you you are really curious about that so feel free to check our book chapter and we also have the figure I'll also leave the figure number here so we have the explanation there okay about uh why why the uh, labeling trick or why the the, the and in that paper we try to dis distinguish let's say compare distance encoding and uh, uh IDGN. So, but the IDGN is just the NBF net. Although they are engineering leads are implemented differently, but the mathematical leads are equivalent. And the DEGN for the node pair two is just a, as a sale. Okay, so you can check the example there. All right. So uh, for the empirical results, so we evaluate the models on the let's say OGB link prediction data sets, and of course with labeling tricks, graph neural networks will we, we'll, uh, mostly outperform the ones without labeling tricks. Okay, and uh, uh, so, 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 but the, the graph neural network baselines without labeling tricks will uh, win on this DDI data sets because they all use node index based encoding. Okay, node index based encoding. And in this DDI data set, uh, the number of nodes is very small, and but the number of edges is very large. So the baseline uh, that use node index based encoding, so do not suffer much from the generalization issue caused by the node index based encoding. But in other, uh, let's say, data sets, so if we use just the node index as a, um, let's say, as an extra attribute, so typically they will suffer from the, uh, let's say, generalization issue. Uh, so for the DDI, because we have very few nodes, but many links, so, so, so that generalization issue will be reduced, okay? All right. So, so in the end, so let me uh, just briefly mention. Uh, so, so, so this is the end of the uh, labeling trick. So, let me next uh, just let me briefly mention one of the recent work on algorithm and system co design to make the labeling tricks and distance encoding, let's say, more scalable to the large networks. Okay. So, uh, uh, so I will finish that in a, maybe three to five minutes. Okay. It will be very quick. Okay, so perhaps some of you have already been aware of the computation overhead induced by uh, the labeling tricks or the distance encodings more specifically. So, so, so here's the issue. So in a standard graph neural network, so, so the node representations are shared across, let's say, different queries on the same graph. For example, the node A's representation is shared by S1 and S2 during the training. Well, multiple queries on the same graph can thus be used together to compute the gradient just after one forward evaluation of the graph neural network. So, but after training uh, during the online serving, so the system can uh, pre-compute the node representation and use them to serve multiple online queries simultaneously. And this is crucial for the industry level applications where the graphs may have, let's say, billions of nodes or billions of edges and the required serving latency is about 10 to 100 milliseconds. Okay. However, if we use other labeling tricks or 
uh, distance encoding, which depend on the query node set. So the obtained node representation cannot be shared across different queries. And this means for every query, we need to first pre-compute the distance encoding or the labeling trick, and then do the forward evaluation of a graph neural network, particularly for that query. And this will significantly slow down the pipeline, okay? And uh, we uh, solve this problem um, by using the following solution. And the key idea behind that is to uh, make the distance features pre-computed and shared as much as possible across different queries. And to do that, uh, our algorithm in the initial stage will do, let's say, random walk sampling, start with every node in the graph. And based on the sample of random walks, then we can easily compute the learning probabilities and use them as a distant features. And this will be computed, uh, let's say, in a pre-computing procedure. So uh, we'll, 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 we'll be done in a in offline, okay? And, and essentially, this sampled random walks uh, paired with the distant features can be viewed as a feature that characterize the neighborhood of, of each node, okay? And then to make the, the, the predictions for the different queries that may contain, let's say, multiple nodes, for each query, say S1 here, so uh, uh, we just group the sampled node walks and distant features associated with the let's say the, the nodes in the query node set as one and the features. And then we just run a, here we don't use graph neural network, but more like, uh, but a, a, a recurrent neural network on the group the random walks and uh, group the random walks and the uh, distant features to make the final prediction, okay? And the key idea here is just to like break the original graph into a, uh, let's say packages of of works, and when we do the uh, inference, we just group the those works together, the relevant works together to make the prediction. Okay, and uh, for the empirical result, we achieve uh, so at least here. So we kind of achieve the comparable or even better prediction performance uh, than a sale on the link prediction task on this ODB data set. And uh, the training time of our model is kind of comparable with respect to the standard graph neural network model, but the inference time is about five to 20 times faster than sale. So, so though we are kind of much slower than the uh, still kind of much slower than the uh, graph neural network when doing uh, inference, okay, on the large graph. Uh, okay, so that's all for today's talk. So I let me just give a, a quick summary of the key message I want to convey here. So, so today we have introduced the distance features, labeling tricks, and their relations uh, their relation to distance encoding. And uh, distance features essentially enable more expressive node uh, representation refinement procedure. Okay, essentially, uh, so distant features is just uh, to make the node representation refinement procedure more expressive. And labeling trick here are to leverage the dependence on the query node set, which makes the model can handle no set representation learning problem. Okay, this is the goal of the uh, labeling trick. And recall that the most, the, uh, even the most expressive node rep representation refinement procedure may fail in node set representation learning problem if without labeling trick, okay? And also uh, the role of distance encoding is just a, a, a combination uh, of late distance features and labeling tricks. It's a kind of like a distance feature based labeling trick. Okay, and in the end, we also briefly introduce a new, uh, uh, more scalable distance encoding based, uh, let's say, learning algorithm for link prediction task over the large network. Okay, so, so thanks for your attention. So I would like to take questions. Okay. Thanks a lot, Pan, for uh, this great presentation. Um, I think like uh, this paper covers a big aspect of recent ideas in graph neural networks of helping improve, um, like using different kind of encoding to improve the expressivity. And I think uh, the presentation that we did right now is a great summary of like different steps that were uh, that were there. Um, and uh, yeah, so first I would like to ask you if you have time for a few more minutes for questions. So I definitely have, no problem. Okay. So yeah, just to see the audience, uh, yeah. Uh, okay, thanks. So I will ask the first question. If you can go uh, to uh, to the slide where you say that um, Laplace imposition encoding are not good labeling tricks, I would like to know 
yeah. uh, why you think that is the case? Um, yeah. Yeah, let, 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 because, let me, uh, sure, sure. Let me jump out. So uh, to go to that slides, let me see. Uh, give yeah. me one sec. Because we have found like in uh, the different work that both theoretically and empirically, um, yeah. the positional encoding using Laplacian eigenvector could help uh, distinguish complex graph and improve uh, the, the performance yeah. of the results. So. Yeah, so uh, let me briefly mention that uh, here. So uh, let me share. Yeah, so so I uh, I think you are seeing about that. So uh, let me. Uh, I I think all the papers use. So first, I I I'm not quite sure whether. Uh, how can I say whether we have let's say before this work there is a more like a. A uh, uh, very let's say uh, sorrow theoretical argument on position encoding. Okay, so uh, although I know there's a lot of empirical work, but I I can tell you the the, the problem behind that. So <clears throat> so the 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 actually all uh, kind of actually why the position encoding cannot let's say will violate the the the, the permutation equivariance. The reason is <clears throat> so there could be so so position encoding even for the uh, let's say the, the same graph uh, the, for, for one graph. So if uh, will be not unique, okay, will be not unique. So it just means even you have a training data set, you, you, if you have a training graph and you have a testing graph, although they are exactly the same, but if you use, let's say different random seed at the initialization or different, uh, I don't know how to compute the Laplace training map, they will be different. Okay, so 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 this means if you model by using let's say position encoding uh, on one of the uh, on, on the training graph, so it cannot be generalized to the to the testing graph. Okay, because of such the so because of the position encoding are not unique. Okay, they are they are actually different, and actually the previous works so how how can they handle that? Uh, of course, it's a mm, let's say many many people are so has a, are already uh, aware of that. So so. The thing to use position encoding is we cannot use that, let's say directly use that as an actual node features uh, in the graph neural network. Okay, so they will need to, let's say, take care of several things such as uh, the uh, perturbation, random perturbation of the signs. So because we know, let's say this, uh, of course, if uh, uh, eigenvector V is, a, so V is the eigenvector and negative V is also an eigenvector. So, so, so they need to take care of the, the non-uniqueness because of the sign, okay? Try to do the random sign perturbation. So this is one way. And, uh, and another way is, uh, yeah, so, so even, even, so in our paper, we, we proved that even we take care of the sign, it's still not enough. Okay, it's still not enough. It's because if if the two, let's say, eigenvalues are the same, then their corresponded eigenvectors or position encodings are not, uh, let's say, are not unique even up to the sign. Okay, are not unique even up to the sign. They actually lines in a subspace. Okay, so 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 we need to take care of that. But I don't think before our work, there's no work, let's say, well taken care of that uh, aspect. Okay, that's well taken care of that aspect. Uh, and uh, actually we, in, in our world, we kind of proved that the sensitivity of the graph neural network uh, by using position encoding uh, is, uh, depends on the smallest eigen gap. So which, what do I mean by eigen gap? The smallest uh, difference between two consecutive eigenvalues. And if two, co two consecutive eigenvalues, uh, the difference is zero, then it means we do not have any stability of the obtained graph neural network, uh, stability guarantee of the obtained graph neural network. So we don't have any guarantees about the generalization of the graph neural network, essentially. So, so, so and the way to take care of, of that is just like, uh, okay, we cannot use the position encoding directly at the node attributes, we need to, let's say, use some other ways to, let's say, to combine this two, combine this two. Okay. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Although I agree with some uh, of your points, like for example, not being unique to the sign and even uh, when there are 
a multiplicity of eigenvalues, then there can be an infinite uh, representation of the, the positional of the eigen factor specifically. Uh, mm -hmm. But um, like first, I'd like to mention that if you take only a single eigen vector, uh, there like you take only the lowest frequency eigen vector, then it happens extremely rarely that there will be two eigenvalues that are the same unless the graph is highly symmetric. So for example, the, the graph that, that you show here, which is a perfect triangle, then yes, mm -hmm. this, this will occur. Um, but yeah, but otherwise, yeah, I kind like, of... uh, uh, yeah I sorry, go ahead. The point, yeah, the, the point I want to, to say is that um, yes, okay, you, you are right that it uh, violates permutation equivariance. But I'd like mm -hmm. to say that uh, it rarely violates permutation equivariance. So it is still okay. it, it is still very usable from the point of view uh, of using it as a node or edge feed the positional encoding. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, we actually had success in the past with different kind of yeah. models using that. So, um, uh, but I, I agree with your point. Yeah, so let me say this one more. So actually positional equivariance, let, let me say this. So permutation equivariance is not what, what we need. Okay. So what we need is generalization, essentially. So so what's well, let's say why we want permutation equivariance is more like, okay, we expect okay, a model is permutation equivariance, then it has good generalization capability. However, a more precise argument uh, for generalization is something called stability. So, so ju just related to the, the previous question you asked is more like, okay, if I have two graph structures that are almost the same, but not exactly the same, then for the small perturbation, then what could we expect of the change of the output of the model? So this is called stability. So we actually, in this paper, we proved that the stability of the graph neural network depends on the inverse of the smallest eigengap between two eigenvalues. So which means even you have, let's say two eigenvectors, eigenvalues that are different, but they are very close to each other, then we can tell the obtained graph neural network will be very sensitive. And yeah, so and, and I, I can also make a further argument is why in, so I, I, I actually know you, you, you the, the work you mentioned. So the previous one used position encoding. So if you check those works, most of those works are um, pretty for, let's say graph level prediction. Okay, so, so we kind of assume that we have a lot of a large data sets with, let's say independent graphs. Okay, and we can use this like uh, different kind of graphs to, let's say, uh, decrease the, the 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 issue caused by the generalization. Okay, so so the generalization issue, we we can use the multiple graphs to 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 handle that. So, however, if you do a uh, one experiment, it's just you decrease the number of training, uh, the number of graphs used for training. You want to test the generalization behavior of your model, then you will see the problem caused by using position encoding. And actually in, in our paper, we also show that. So we, we focus on more on uh, another uh, regime. It's not like a graph classification task, but more like we just focus on a very small number of graphs. If we just only have a very one large graph or, or maybe 10 graphs, then you will see the, the generalization issue will appear there. But, uh, but I think it's a very interesting question to investigate actually when, let's say at, let's say the, the basically sample complexity. So what the size of the training data sets we, we may have or how much level of permutation equivalence or, or, or stability we want to capture. So there could be a trade-off, I have to say. So, so but it's very nice to, to, let's say, do the further direction to investigate this kind of yeah. question. Yeah. I guess to, uh, to use some kind of positional encoding, uh, for example, like the Laplacian, as you said, there are problem of stability mm -hmm. and we have to make sure to use it uh, the, the right way. If we mm -hmm. don't use it the right way, then it can, it can cause problems. Yes. Um, that, that's, uh, that's definitely for sure. But one thing I would like to mention also, um, if you like uh, your latest method, I think it was a seal, um, where you use the random walk positional encoding to define distances. Uh, 
Mm -hmm. uh, well, what we show in one of our paper, and it's actually based on previous work, um, is that, well, one can obtain the heat kernel, uh, mm -hmm. the heat kernel from the Laplace in eigenvectors and eigenvalues. Mm -hmm. And the heat kernel approximates a smooth random walk, um, a, a smooth random walk yes. on the graph. Yes. yes. Um, so um, it definitely means that in theory, using all the eigenvectors and all the eigenvalues, you can mm -hmm. retrieve something very, very similar to the random walk positional encoding. The question is like, how do you use it in a way that allows the network to not be sensitive to this eigen gap that you mentioned? Um, yeah. And in some sense, like um, I believe, I believe the random walk positional encoding, from what my experience, is a very good idea, and it's uh, very stable and powerful at detecting local structure. Mm -hmm. um, but in some sense, like if you want to have a sense of community, I believe some kind of node positional encoding, um, so some node positional encoding like eigenvectors can provide this more global global view of the graph. Um, oh, right, so. I, I'm trying to understand you. You want to say okay. I guess you, 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 what you want to say is more like, okay, when we do Laplace and like map, it captures the global information. And uh, also the first argument is more like, okay, we, when we use the eigenvalues, it can approximate this uh, random work uh, stuff, right? Features. Yes, if I exactly. Understand. Yeah, I, I, I want to mention one thing here. So it's more like one thing. So if you use this distant features, there's no, nothing you need to worry about permutation equivalence because it's always permutation equivalence. So there's no generalization issue. Mm -hmm. So so the key point behind this is that here we call it distant features instead of positional features. These are different. Distant yeah. features characterize a thing between two nodes. And they are always will satisfy permutation equivalence. So, so you don't need to worry about sensitivity. And if you break that distant features into each node position features with the position encoding, then you need to worry uh, sensitivity. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, of course, of course. Yeah. This yeah, is so a this much is a, more stable, yeah. Yeah, this is a, so I, I, I believe there's a trade-off, okay? So the, I, I believe there's a trade-off. And actually in the, in, in the paper I just mentioned, this uh, I clear of our very recent I clear uh, paper, we actually try to discuss the things. So, so basically, if we use position encoding, there are a, a bunch of benefit. One benefit is just what you mentioned, it's more global, and and also uh, and also uh, it's it's actually saves the complexity. Okay, so 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 because it's, uh, we we kind of break the distance be, uh, to 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 each node. Okay. Break the, the node pair thing to to each node thing. So so essentially it will decrease the the, the complexity, mm -hmm. uh, which is great. So 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 the only thing is when we use the, the how can I say the position encoding, we must be very careful. So uh, yes. so other otherwise it's it could be very very sensitive or or it it will induce some generalization issue behind that. Mm -hmm. Yeah yeah. So yeah, so I. I, I mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I also see uh, your reasoning why uh, this kind of uh, encoding that you propose, uh, this kind of labeling and random walk, I mm -hmm. really understand why it's better also for node classification and edge prediction compared mm -hmm. to uh, the other kind of positional encoding that could be better for graph property prediction. And the reason is that like it's more stable at the local level to use this kind of random walk. And what I really like about your work is like really this in-depth theoretical analysis of mm -hmm. those other methods that even if they are theoretically motivated, the, the analysis has not been done in depth. And here I, I see that like um, everything is well motivated theoretically. So I, I mm -hmm. find it uh, very interesting. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for your, yeah, thank you for your comments. Mm -hmm. Can I ask so, a question? Ah, uh, sure. So uh, here ben, is some echo. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah. There's, there's, a, there's some heavy echo with your microphone. So can you uh, try to change your microphone or something before? Sound. Yeah. Is yeah. It, is it, is it, uh, I, no, it's not better. 
I guess uh, you may have two devices. Maybe you want to mute one. How is it now? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, no, it's oh, perfect. Okay. Yeah. yeah. There's three of us in this room, but only one mic was on. So I don't know why it wasn't working. <laughs> um, so, Pan, we we at Twitter we've tried out um, out your methods. We tried out Seal and stuff from Labeling Trick, and we know it works really, really well, better than almost anything else. But we know it works really, really well on things on graphs where the problem that you set up to solve simply does not exist. There are there are no um, there are no non isomorphic substructures. They just don't exist. Um, and I know you've alluded to some notion of generalization being the key to why your methods really work. But I wonder if you could expand on that a little bit because I'm not quite I'm not quite seeing that. Like why? it seems like your, sol your theory solves a non-problem and then your methods work better anyway. And I don't quite understand the connection. Uh, so, uh, okay. Um, I guess you want to mention the, so, so I guess your question is more like, uh, although my theory, so my theory here is for uh, distinguish non-isomorphic structures. So yeah. it's more like a zero one stuff, but uh, why it still works for generalization? Right. Why it still works on graphs where non-isomorphic substructures don't exist. Okay, okay. Um, <clears throat> so first thing, I, I don't think until now there is any works that uh, indeed solve the question that indeed break the, make the bridge between, um, let, let, let me think about this, between the uh, something called permutation equivalence and the generalization. So let, let me let me mention about this. So, uh, uh, yeah. So so here is a, a little bit uh, complicated intuition behind. So um, let let me say this. So basically, all graph neural network. If we start using graph neural network, so we kind of assume that we have permutation equivalence. So uh, let me say this. So if we forget about graph neural network, if we just uh, talk about expressive power, multi-layer perception is best, okay? We don't need to use graph neural network, okay? Multi-layer perceptions can distinguish everything, okay? And, and what essentially graph neural network bring to us is when we keep permutation equivalence, how can we be more expressive? So this is essentially what a graph neural network is trying to answer. So, 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 and, 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 uh, and the, the, the thing is, the thing is uh, what I have all introduced today is about, okay, we always satisfy the condition, the permutation equivalence, okay, which is, how can I say this? Um, um, uh, so some, some kind of condition we always satisfied because this permutation equivalence is related to uh, the generalization issue. So, uh, and under this condition, our method can still be, let's say, uh, more expressive or can be, uh, let me mention here, something here. Yeah, so can be approximate. Uh, sorry, let me try to find the question. I want to address here. Yeah. So basically, we although we are just talking about the second thing, distinguish different graph structures. But the, the, the thing is, although in the in the graphs, okay, or in practice, we, we haven't seen any kind of non-isomorphic stuff. So when you have a more expressive graph neural network models, especially uh, let's say it's kind of well designed, then it can do the function approximation with much less parameters than using a le maybe less expressive graph neural network models. I'm, I'm not sure whether I, I, I make this clear. So basically, uh, if you ask, okay, why the methods, why in practice, okay, we, we don't have non as more, let's say, uh, so, so we, we, if we use a graph neural network, we can always distinguish everything, okay? So, so then why we still care about more expressive, doing a more expressive thing? Because we don't need to uh, worry about that. So, so, I, so my feeling for this question 
is more like when you build a more expressive graph neural network and you also guarantee the permutation equivalence, which means you guarantee the generalization thing. So it can, in the, so because essentially what you want to solve is a, a function approximation, okay? And essentially those more expressive graph neural network typically can do better functional approximation with maybe limited number of layers, maybe smaller number of layers or smaller amount of, uh, smaller number of parameters. I'm now, uh, so, so did I make that point clear? You, you did, but it seems, and it clearly works in practice, but it seemed like wishful thinking a little bit, like the connection is not. Is yeah, easy. yeah. So I, I have to say the theory here is uh, just, uh, how can I say, we can all solve everything. Uh, let's say uh, that perfectly match. Uh, so exactly like, uh, okay, we prove this, then we have the, the good performance. So it's not like, like this, but more like there is just some underlying connection between those two. And also, uh, so people in, in graph community, so people always argue about, okay, we want to build, let's say, permutation equivalent thing. So, but there's a, not like a very clear connection or theoretical or mathematical analysis between uh, permutation equivalence and generalization bound so 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 we we are always missing that so uh, yeah so so it's still like um uh, so what we have here and what we have in in practice uh there's a still some gap <laughs> yeah i have to say but would we not need something like one of those probabilistic bounds where we can say that you know we, given these two graphs are within mm -hmm. this graph distance of each other we can separate them you know in this percentage of the cases by more than this distance. There's that kind of argument that's missing, isn't it? Yeah, 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 yeah. So so I, I totally agree. I think uh, uh, maybe a better argument is like this. But for that, I, I strongly suggest you may um, check our paper. We have one definition there. So we try to generalize the permutation equivalence to, um, let's say, stability, which is just like, OK, if I have two graphs that are a little bit different, Okay, they are not exactly the non-isomorphic. And then what do we expect of the output of the graph neural network model? Great. Thanks very much, yeah. Pat. It's the next thing I'll read. Really great talk. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there's something like uh, I'd like to discuss here about the, the equivariance uh, and the importance of permutation equivariance. Uh, that's something that's uh, at the same time I, at the foundation of graph neural network. A graph neural network has to be permutation equivariance in order to work well and generalize well. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, there has been so many papers recently mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. are not perfectly permutation equivariant, mm -hmm. but where permutation equivariant uh, equivariance is uh, is somewhat close. Like uh, yeah, yeah. so. I would say that a perfect permutation invariance is maybe something that's uh, too too ideal uh, to achieve and too strong. And yes, uh, yes. a quasi permutation invariance uh, will both improve, uh, will keep the general generalizability, but will also mm -hmm. improve the expressivity of the network. Yeah. Um, and one, one can view that that way. For example, in images, so we have convolutional neural networks that are translation invariant. Mm -hmm. But for most images, uh, you, take, you theoretically also have a rotation invariance where uh, mm -hmm. if you rotate a cat, it's still a cat. Yes. But in the CNN, they don't enforce the rotational invariance. They only enforce translation invariance. And rotation invariance is uh, just induced via the augmentation so that a CNN that is not trained will not mm -hmm. be rotation invariance, but a CNN that is trained will become quasi rotational uh, rotation invariant. Yeah. Um, and by doing that, by doing it that way, instead of enforcing the rotation invariance, it allows mm -hmm. more expressivity with directional filters and things like that. Uh, and I think like, uh, for, for example, when you say that eigenvectors are not uh, permutation equivariant, but mm -hmm. if they are almost permutation equivariant in most cases, then it also allows uh, to build these more directional kernels, uh, but um, generalize almost perfectly as well. 
Yeah. And the same can be said with other methods uh, that recently that have been developed where they sample random substructures for each mm -hmm. node. Well, this sampling of random substructures, uh, it's not a permutation equivariant, but if you sample enough substructures, you still get something that is quasi permutation equivariant. And um, yeah, so my, my point is just to say that it's a goal that is maybe too hard to achieve and we should um, instead try to achieve the, uh, a model that despite not being perfectly permutation equivariant, can learn to be permutation equivalent given enough enough examples. Yeah. So I I am very agree with you. So I think is uh, this um, let's say permutation equivalent just as you mentioned maybe is so strong. So so perhaps uh, sometimes we want to have let's say make it a little bit uh, let's say weaker. So so let's say almost a permutation equivalent or something, and then we can um, in that sense we can have a, like a more expressive model, but uh, uh, also keep the generalization capability good. So 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 I I I totally agree with you. So so uh, and and it's nice to see if we may have some let's say more uh, principled argument along that line. Yeah. Yeah, and that, that's what makes it good in your paper that you discuss about the stability, because yeah. I think this stability is really what can be used to define like how much are we close to permutation invariance. Yes. Uh, yes. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, so we will conclude the presentation here. Uh, thanks a lot again for, for coming. It was a great presentation, great talk. And uh, looking forward to uh, to see your book as well. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So thank you. Yes. Thank you.